Hello, welcome to Sammy's Treasures, episode 1, June 2019. This is Sammy's Treasures, revealing the jewels of autism. For those of you who may not be familiar with our work or know who we are, let me just go through a little bit of a background. More details can be found, however, on our webpage, www.moonoros.one. First of all, uh, I want you to know that this is a, a family endeavor, and so you might hear sounds in the background of our family moving around, dog barking. You may hear Sammy sounds, which is um, actually wonderful light language as what comes through her voice. So please bear with us if there's any background noise and allow it to add to the reality of who we are and what we are here to offer. So my husband and I are the parents of three children. Our oldest son is currently 23. He is diagnosed with Down syndrome. Our middle daughter, who is Sammy, is uh, considered a nonverbal autistic, and we have a younger son who um, is just about to go off to college, and he would prefer not to be named uh, in in these podcasts, so I will respect his his wishes and not mention his name. Just to give you a little bit more of a background, my husband and I raised three very unique children. Like I said, uh, Chris is diagnosed with Down syndrome. Uh, He had lots of medical issues as a baby. Sammy was diagnosed with autism at the age of about uh, 28 months. And our youngest son is a neurotypical uh, developing human. But when you live with Chris and Sam, nothing is really what you would consider normal. I suppose. So we have a very unique family structure. We were very much embedded in um, the system of fixing our kids. So we went through lots of our early intervention programs for Chris uh, and, you know, uh, started with Sammy with early intervention as soon as she had been diagnosed. So both Chris and Sam had uh, all the traditional therapies that were offered, you know, while they were growing up, zero to three programs, speech, language pathology, um, occupational therapy. Chris had uh, physical therapy. Sammy had um, a version of uh, applied behavior analysis or ABA, uh, what they call training from an early age, and she probably had that for about 10 years. She had a, what I would consider a strict ABA program um, for a few months until we moved from where we were. And she received what I would call a more of a a gentle form of ABA, Um, but it was still uh, based on the principles of behavior analysis, uh, learning theory, those types of things. So I have a master's in social services and worked in child welfare for many years. And my husband has his PhD in information sciences. So I would say we're very much committed and entrenched in the system of thought and system of treatment for conditions uh, or what we think of uh, as conditions like autism and Down syndrome. And it wasn't until perhaps about 10 years ago when my consciousness really started to awaken and open. I received a diagnosis of breast cancer in 2008 and went through traditional treatment for that. So um, this is this uh, shift in consciousness, ascension, those kinds of 
um, thoughts did not enter our minds until probably 2009 after I um, had gone through most of my cancer treatments at that time and started really awakening after uh, I'd been t attuned to practice Reiki and um, then started to really start to feel Sammy energetically. I was very focused on fixing her at that time. As most parents know, if you have a child with uh, a diagnosis of some type of uh, disability, we uh, worry a lot about our kids for what would happen to them when we are no longer here. And so that fear-based mentality, I would say, was a big drive for me and how um, uh, I wanted to teach my kids and teach Sammy and help them to become as, quote, functional as, as they can be in this world so that they could navigate our world um, as smoothly as possible, whatever that meant. But, you know, obviously it's you think in terms of um, that dependence and depending on others to care for them. So it's a very scary um, way to to live and raise raise children. And I know I was very frustrated at times when um, I couldn't quote fix Sammy. Uh, Chris, you know, I kind of already expected that he was probably quote mentally um, retarded. Um, and it turns out he's really a lot more He's actually intellectually um, intact, but that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother story and a whole nother um, level of experience. But for Sammy especially, one thing I really noticed was that people really treated Sammy differently compared to Chris. Um, a lot of our autistic kids are very attractive. They don't um, look, quote, disabled if you were to just see them walking down the street at first. And people really were much more compassionate to our son, Chris. And so that kind of made me feel that I needed to work harder to, quote, fix Sammy. And, you know, also being a female, you feel that they're more vulnerable in our, in our society and in our world. Um, so those are kinds of the, the things that uh, I went through. I remember in some time around 2009, 2010, um, I had heard of uh, indigo children and crystal children, and that um, I can't remember if I saw it, uh, a description in a book or something, which I didn't buy, but I happened to, to kind of leaf through a book, I think, and it was describing um, that our autistics were here to assist humanity in navigating a very different earth in, you know, like in the 2020, the year of 2025 and that time frame. And uh, I remember thinking that that was just nonsense and that it was probably just parents who were trying to help make themselves feel better about their kids. Um, well, lo and behold, I am probably one of the most um, woo-woo, quote woo-woo people, um, that I could have imagined becoming. Um, I considered myself spiritual. Um, after about 1995, um, I'd had some encounters with Yeshua in 1995. I mean, really real life, um, awake um, experiences with Yeshua where he was standing in the room and I could feel him touching my face. I mean, really, just really profound um, things that took place. And uh, Chris was actually born a year later on one of the most profound days that I had um, in April of 1995. And Chris was born exactly a year uh, to that to the date. So it was a, a fascinating time, but. I didn't quite 
know what that meant. I expected wonderful, wonderful things to happen, um, but not realizing that there was tremendous amount of uh, years of challenges that I would uh, go through before I came to this point where I am today and um, accepting, not just accepting Sammy for who she is, but really seeing the amazing and really magnificent gift that she offers and that all the autists um, that I call the seven higher heavens offer. Um, well, that's our dog barking, so uh, excuse him. But um, so my awakening continued through, oh, you know, 2010, uh, when I really started to um, experience other things coming in. I was receiving symbols, I think even in the summer of 2009, before I had been attuned to uh, Reiki. I was starting to see symbols, and then I was remembering, it was as if I was remembering what, that I was here to do something, and I couldn't remember exactly what that what that was, um, but I continued to uh, get stronger and stronger energetic um, messages and visions with Sammy, but I didn't want to believe it at that time. Uh, again, that fear-based parent parental role of feeling like um, I needed to fix her in order for her to be able to get along in the world. I'm an awesomeism practitioner, um, but Susie Miller uh, um, developed, and that really helped me connect with Sammy. Uh, and then since then, I've continued to to grow and expand, and um, connect at deeper and deeper soul levels with Sammy. Our our communication is a soul to soul connection. Uh, I experience her messages um, through my neurology, through a full body experience. I don't consider myself a channel. I experience um, her messages. I have visions. She sends me visions and images, um, sometimes uh, direct words that I am supposed to interpret. So... We, she inspired us to put up our website in um, late 2015. Um, we offered just all free material. I wasn't really ready to fully step into another level of um, service at that time. She wanted to do a podcast right away, and I just wasn't ready at the time. And so uh, I took the time to continue to grow continue my own expansion, uh, continue work through fears and my own ego matrix. Um, and I'm at a point now where I feel that I can deliver what Sammy is here to deliver. And again, this is a, a family endeavor for us. Chris is definitely present with his soul consciousness. My husband supports us with his technical expertise and um, and in so many other ways just by being here and, and believing in us and believing in what we have to offer. He is uh, probably our biggest fan um, and supports our physical living in order for us to um, do this, do this work. Um, uh, so please take a moment and, um, relax, relax into this space. Sammy and I, uh, created a, uh, an energy matrix that would be the space, um, the, the field and the space for Sammy's Treasures, Revealing the Jewels of Autism. It has lots of energy symbols 
in it to um, uh, to draw from. The energy process is in just being in this space with us. Um, we invite you into this space to be with not just Sammy, but the uh, Autist Collective of the Seven Higher Heavens, or as some call the Collective Consciousness of the Children. They're a very, very vast consciousness, and they are actually our soul lineage. Um, their original souls from the omniversal realms, which to me means it's beyond the multiverse that some people are talking about. This is the omniverse where uh, original creation took place, where the birth of the first universes um, were, were inspired. And so they're taking us to that place, not even really a place, but in a, a space beyond time, beyond dimensions, when um, uh, the first souls were born out of formlessness. And so they have much to teach us, new lessons about soul and new spiritual platform that will become our, our total reality. So meaning that... Um, the spiritual basis will be the platform for all our manifestations, all our systems, our financial institutions, our economic systems, our educational systems, our med medical systems, all these, all those institutions that have been based on a third dimensional reality will eventually dissolve and dissipate and we will we, we are already in the process now of rebuilding the new new structures, new foundational architectures for the new belief systems. Um, and they're here to uh, give us that new information just by being in their consciousness. Allow their souls to speak to your soul, so to speak. Um, so before we, well, we're already have, um, dived into this, to this podcast, to the, to the energy that we are, uh, offering through this podcast. Um, let me just read you Sammy's intentions, which came in very clearly for me. I thought I was going to write the intentions and she was very clear. And so, um, what I speak, I speak through uh, uh, spaces um, that we share in our soul matrix. Sammy and I share spaces within our soul matrix. And so um, my voice transmission is also carrying her soul consciousness through it. So she said her intentions are, that the audience hear and feel my transmissions with clarity and focus. They will listen with their hearts. They will experience non-judgment. They will experience states of non-duality. They will experience the pure tones of love, which comes from the zero point field. These messages and transmissions will assist in shifting consciousness to the new platform. So this is very much what the kids are wanting to do now, to assist in um, this transformation, this ascension evolution, ascension and evolution to the kids or with, of the seven higher autists. I call them kids. Some of them are obviously adults. Um, so to them, ascension and evolution are very much the same thing. What we're becoming is um, a physical soul consciousness. So if you can imagine that in third dimensional reality where we were much denser and heavier, the soul was really not able to connect to the body um, in a way that they were a vibrational match. So it was as if we were accessing the soul 
outside of our bodies. Um, we call it the higher self, but now the higher self is really merging with the physical body. And this is made possible because we have um, shifted to actually a higher harmonic universe, which changes the rules of how um, the first, second, and third dimensions uh, operate and function. And so if you join us for the, our June 21st, 2019 summer solstice free webinar, we'll be talking um, a bit more about that. So um, to continue, um, we want you to know that all the kids of the Autist Collective are invited into the space. Um, some of them uh, have already connected with, with us and connected with me through my neurology. And certainly there are others who are connected with the collective consciousness of the children and these autists of the seven higher heavens. And um, many of them are making strides forward and how they're delivering messages through through books and other uh, transmissions like through their music or art and drawings so this is really um, coming to us from many different avenues and many different directions so for us um, and where Sammy is currently operating, um, it's through our website and our podcasts and our YouTube channels that will be the main vehicle for her at this time and maybe, you know, into the future. Um, it's not clear. I've come to a point where I allow the information to come through. I'll allow myself to feel guided, and so um, I'm in a space of of trusting uh, and that um, what wants to come through and how it wants to come through is the 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 right way for us. That this is our mission, and this is the way we are are meant to to serve here at this time. So. A message today that Sammy wants um, me to talk about is uh, about how they appear broken. So like I said, Sammy is considered to be um, uh, a, a severely autistic, nonverbal person. She uh, demonstrated... Um, spoken words throughout her life you know she would spontaneously say things but then we would never hear it again and she you know has continued that way all through her life you know even with treatments and therapy um, that's the way it's always been for her so um, she appears very dysfunctional physically she can't uh, con command and control her body even with uh, the best of therapies and many of the uh, quote nonverbal autistic um, teens are expressing just that now through a um, new I don't know if treatment is the right word but a sort of um, sort of teaching vehicle, a rapid prompting method developed by um, a very uh, courageous mom of an autistic son um, who uh, developed these, these basically letter boards, stencil letter boards, and um, has been a way for many, many of these quote, nonverbal autistics to um, get c control of their bodies enough so that they can intentionally point to letters and, and, and spell through educational 
lessons and um, some of them are making phenomenal and very rapid progress and have written books about their experiences. And so they're showing us that uh, physical brokenness, appearing, appearances of physical brokenness, does not equate to uh, intellectual dysfunction or cognitive dis dysfunction. That they've been hearing all along and they've been listening and taking in information. And it's quite mi mind-boggling to think then that they've been in special education programs where um, they've been taught the same lessons over and over their entire school career. You know, Sammy, if I think back to what she had to endure, um, you know, being taught ABCs and colors and numbers and tracing lines, you know, for fine motor control and you know, sensory diets, um, uh, it's really quite mind-boggling that um, she endured that and that many kids, many of our kids, endured that kind of um, treatment in our special education system. Uh, we started Rapid Prompting Method in 2016 as well, and Sammy demonstrated how intelligent she is, and I was... I was really um, taken aback and uh, very sorry after learning how intelligent she was, or it is, um, for the way uh, I had treated her at times, the way I had spoken to her um, or spoken, um, talked about her in front of her, all those kinds of things. Um, and, I'm, and I'm sure I'm still guilty of it at times, you know, now, but... Um, she is very intelligent, and um, I started homeschooling her uh, shortly after that when she spelled out that she didn't want to go to school anymore, and you can understand why. But anyway, um, she, she is very intelligent, and she knows a lot, um, even things that I didn't, wouldn't have, that she hadn't been taught in school, and you wonder how she... She knows it was to that extent. But in 2017, um, things started to really change. The cosmic, um, levels of cosmic information that started to stream through were very intense. I mean, I could feel how intense it was, and it was very intense for Sammy um, and uh, very challenging. So... There was many, many months where it was very frustrating and many months when she wasn't sleeping well um, and not even sleeping in her bed. And um, I was sleeping on the sofa or on a little cot next to the sofa because she was sleeping on the couch in the living room. But anyway, um, she had obviously other uh, cosmic work that she was doing and um, it made it very difficult for her to focus on something like rapid prompting method, which is still like a linear processing because it, you know, engages the left brain and um, a linear thought process. And um, eventually I had to let that go myself. And now when I see the level of information that um, she's, accessing and what she's bringing in, I, I understand um, why it's been so challenging for her. And as we enter the years of 2020 and beyond here, I do um, see that things um, are going to change even more uh, as our dimensionalized system is changing. Um, our light body is changing, how we plug in to the dimensionalized field uh, is changing, which, by the way, is through our chakra system. Um, and that's something that we'll be talking about on our, on our webinar, what that, what that means um, exactly. But anyway, um, she wants to convey that uh, appearing physically broken does not mean that they're intellectually broken but also that 
looking physically broken also does not equate to being spiritually broken. That people may see her and others like her as appearing physically dysfunctional, having odd behaviors, um, and that this is not, this does not equate to physical brokenness, I mean spiritual brokenness either, that um, she wants us to look at what we think of as being spiritually awakened, you know, something really beautiful, and the energy is beautiful, it's, it's um, you know, it's, it's pure love, it's um, magical, we look at angels that are drawn, these beautiful angels with long flowing hair, and um, the female ones with voluptuous figures, and the males, the male angels with, you know, um, muscles, and they look robust and healthy and beautiful skin. Um, and when we look at these autistics, these beyond verbal autistics, um, who can look physically dysfunctional, and this notion, um, Sammy's saying there's a lot of people that um, have that stereotype that, um, that then they can't possibly be these vast spiritual uh, teachers and um, pure soul beings because they look physically um, dysfunctional and they have odd behaviors and they have outbursts and they can't control their behaviors. Um, and Sammy is saying certainly there's a lot of parents who are also operating from that um, kind of consciousness or mentality. So Sammy wants people to consider that um, they cannot function in their physical bodies because they are not fully connected to the physical body in the blueprint from which we've been operating. So we've been operating in a third dimensional physical body, meaning that the first, second, and third chakras basically rule the consciousness of the human. And although, you know, we've had spiritual growth or people who are spiritually um, evolved and they can move beyond the threshold of, um, let's say, the level of the diaphragm into the heart and the higher um, chakras, which accesses uh, higher frequencies uh, through the dimensionalized system that still the main functioning was a third dimensional uh, by wave um, architecture, meaning underneath, underlying the, the form is a, uh, a fractal matrix and which is energetic, which is light codes um, that enable the body and our third dimensional uh, reality to, to manifest. And so that third dimensional form was really not consistent vibrationally to where the soul matrix vibrates at. The soul matrix is based on a tri-wave or the trinity wave. And trinity not as in any one religion, but if you think of the triangle and um, the three points, that would be a tri-wave. That is balance, where it's balancing polarity. The bi-wave is uh, two points, basically, or what we see as two spheres, that's what we've been taught in the sacred geometry that um, is prevalent is that uh, yeah, that's by way of architecture. There's only two points and the light comes through the vesica Pisces. And I don't want to get too complex with um, these podcasts. So just imagine that we have a soul matrix that's based on 
a tri-wave energetic matrix and the body is yet the body is operating in a bi wave and so they're not a match and so these kids these autists that are coming in um their soul agreement is to not lose their connection with their soul which is accessing again because their original soul is emanating from the omniversal levels um, they have an agreement that we're not going to lose our connection to from where we are originated from. And so they're connected to the physical body just enough to be present here, but not to function the way we have been functioning. Because if they had connected to the body in the same way it's like full forgetfulness like we've forgotten who we were I had no idea why I was here until you know I was in my 40s um, and lo and behold I got slammed with um, uh, breast cancer to wake me up you know uh, whatever messages I was getting I was not able to hear it and so um, I basically got smacked over the head um, with a diagnosis, which at the time I couldn't even remember thinking that there's something I'm supposed to remember. Um, something, this is, this diagnosis of cancer is telling me that I'm not whole. I'm not operating as a whole being. How can this, uh, aspects of my own body forget that it's part of this body because that's what cancer is it's like these cells that have gone off on their own you know and they start reproducing themselves in mass and you know they can't see that it's going to kill the host you know eventually so it doesn't that doesn't make sense and so in that sense our physical bodies are like that we um that that third dimensional human is so dense that you come in and you forget. It's total forgetfulness. Um, and um, from these kids' perspectives, you know, they kept sending masters and great teachers to try and, you know, uplift humanity. And we get to a certain point, but then that lower uh, three ego matrix of the lower three chakras um, really take over, you know, and... Um, let's say seduce us back into the same system that we have been operating in um, and others who were great powerful souls came and they actually became seduced themselves um, by ego and then gave away their power which um, they are powerful souls you know and have access to a lot of different vibrations as powerful souls and you know basically sold uh, out humanity to some degree and um, you know uh, perpetuated this the the artificial false matrix to continue to perpetuate so they look broken physically because really it's not the true design of what the human body is supposed to operate as. And so now as we are transitioning to a tri-wave architecture, which is based on soul, spirit, uh, coherence with the physical body, things will really start to change. And um, we see challenges because people are still invested in that third dimensional system. They are, there are people fighting to maintain what they know and what they believed in all along. And so the new systems that are being built are going to be based on 
that pure love which comes from the zero point field, the, the, the neutrality, the balance of the masculine, feminine, the balance of the electron which has a negative charge and the proton which has a positive charge. And even if we look at the atomic level, there is an electron, there's a proton, and there's a neutron. There is a third element in the mix that balances out the extreme polarity. When you're operating in by wave, you're ex operating in extreme polarity, in duality. And so many of our concepts and belief systems are also based on that polarity. And we will be witnessing and experiencing the dissolution and the disintegration, the dissipation of those by wave concepts. Concepts like being worthy or unworthy that does not even exist in the realms of the law of one. Um, deserving or not deserving, no such concept really exists. Hoarding, concepts of hoarding, concepts of entitlement, those are extreme polarities playing out. So we have the rich on the planet who hoard resources, and so there is an opposite pole, uh, this concept of entitlement of people feeling like, well, I need to get my share because there's this other force that is in play of um, people hoarding, you know, resources or hoarding things. And so we see the manifestations even in our world of how that physically even plays out, you know, the deserving and the undeserving. So we have poor, rich and poor, we have people living on the streets when we have so uh, much food that we actually burn it. You know, it's, it's very, very, um, some really insane concepts that exist on the planet, you know. So, um, this is, this is why they're here. This is what they're here for. And so don't equate um, appearances of physical brokenness of even being spiritually broken. And now I can understand, you know, for some parents that it becomes so frustrating when your child is um, having uh, what looks like a temper tantrum, you know, and they're, you know, 15, 16, 18, 20 years old because it uh, can be very, very extreme. Uh, it can be scary and it can look, I mean, it looks like violence at that point when um, you're talking about young adults having those kinds of, of outbursts. And, you know, sometimes the energy is so intense that comes in that it, it, they, it's, it's hard for them to um, uh, hold it through their bodies. Um, other times it could be that they are experiencing so much discord in the people around them, you know, and what's expected of them, um, that they can go into, uh, a rage or an extreme, uh, physical reaction, whether it be, um, physically attacking someone or putting holes in the wall or, uh, physically injuring themselves which is a big one. Um, and Sammy has certainly had those, had those times as well. Um, uh, and we have learned to, you know, manage it by staying calm. And when it comes out of nowhere, we know that it's something, usually that's something cosmic that's taking place, that's coming through. And uh, so I support her by opening up my own field and allowing whatever wants to come through to come through. So that's how we've learned to work with some of those things. But anyway, so sometimes it can look like they're not functioning. 
or it can look like they're not spiritually advanced beings. How can, how can they attack someone if they're so spiritually advanced? How can they um, be destructive when they are supposed to be advanced souls? And it's because, again, the physical body um, in, the, in the current way that it operates uh, is not meant to, to be able to hold that level of, of consciousness or um, stream in that kind of uh, information and then and, or at other times when um, they're so sensitive as soul beings that their physical body is also much more sensitive they have a different sensory system because their souls are much more sensitive and more vast souls so it translates to their bodies but again it's the body is based on um, uh, an architecture or form that is not in complete coherent resonance with their soul consciousness and so we see these uh, extreme outbursts or outbursts of anger and frustration they feel it more um, and more deeply than than we do so but it does not mean that they don't feel. It does not mean that they ha that they do they don't have empathy. Um, Sammy is saying that uh, we have compassion. We know deep compassion. If it wasn't for our love of humanity, we would not be here it's because of the great love that cre creator has for humanity for this earth and all its inhabitants and all its kingdoms all its many kingdoms that we are here we're not here to purposely disrupt everything but the disruption is necessary in order to um, move to a new system, in order to build a new system. And the more people, she says, the more people we can get on board in this consciousness to feel safe with what is happening, the smoother this transition can be. This is our core mission. This is what is at the heart of why we are here. We are here to free humanity from the shackles of the third dimensional belief systems. You are already have been set free, but now it's mainly the, the belief systems that you're operating on that is keeping many looping in the same cycle and causing more disruptions. So Sammy, I'm going to just check in with her. Is there anything else that you want to add or say? This feels... Um, complete for today um, I know if uh, this is the first time that you've joined in for our work it may sound uh, complex our aim is to really bring the information um, to a level that is as understandable um, as possible and really what I have found, especially in the last two years when it's changed quite a bit, is that just being in that consciousness really um, even rewires the brain. It, it has changed the way I look at things. It cha has changed the way I think about things. It's changed um, how I access information 
from as a soul consciousness myself. So this is also one of our biggest intentions for these podcasts is to just allow people to be bathed in this consciousness um, of Sammy and uh, the Autist Collective of the Seven Higher Heavens. So take a moment and um, breathe and um, don't forget to look at our website www.moonorals.one there's a lot of free information and recordings there we access symbols Sammy and I have developed our own attunement, attunement method we also have a lot of free uh, meditations and energy processes in our on our YouTube channel moonoros.one as well you can follow us on Facebook moonoros.one and look for our web, free webinar which will be on June 21st 2019 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The link for the webinar will be shared through our uh, email blasts and also on our MoonOros.1 Facebook page. If you can't make it live, it will be posted on our YouTube channel. Thank you very much for joining us. Please take a moment, breathe deeply. And if you will, allow me to do a sweep of your uh, auric field. Your light body. mental body, the emotional body, clear the physical body of any matrices and patterns that you want to let go of and clear. And with this little tone, we'll bring coherence to your soul matrix as it wants to uh, connect with your physical body. And Sammy adds her breath. I'm in her room right now. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, Sammy says thank you from all the kids of the collective consciousness, the autists of the seven higher heavens. May each of you be blessed. And so it is.